trying to get back into this fight. He's just going to have to get more active because George is a good counter puncher. Again, he's measured. He doesn't. Pro he provides a small target too. The way he turns his body completely. Yeah, he has that that, that shoulder block. Yeah. That uh, you want to call it that Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, style. look, you have to think about it. May I, I, May I don't like to say that name around you, Floyd Mayweather. Not, uh, I don't know why you'd even say that. Uh, okay, okay. Come on. Nothing happened. We've had dust ups. <laughs> it's all fun. There you go. Great for boxing. Great for boxing. Look, it works. Clearly, right. you see a guy standing there with the shoulder roll, and you move, and you, you bob up and down. It works. Now Chris Bird tries to get to work. And that's what he had to do. He'll have to throw a lot of punches and bunches to get this guy frustrated and just keep tapping him. Not looking for a big punch. Shannon, it was interesting when we were on Friday Night Fights for Calzaghe Hopkins the night before that fight at Planet Hollywood, and I was sitting there with Roy Jones. We showed clips of it before, but it was interesting to, you know, make the comparisons that, again, Roy Jones, after an excellent fight against John Ruiz, a top five heavyweight, and an excellent win, him shrinking back to fight Antonio Tarver at 175, no. and it, again, the electricity looked gone from his body, yeah. and yet you can't help but think that now looking at Chris Bird. Yeah, I'm serious, Brian. Look at his legs. They're bone dry, no sweat. You look at uh, Sean legs a little sweat going on you need that you know what I mean you can see right now that um, it's just not there we're through six here in Las Vegas back here in Las Vegas Brian Kenny Shannon Briggs ringside round seven the main event Chris Bird and Sean George Chris Bird after that last round oh, walked over here and said to us over the ring over the ring ropes I think I could say this I look like crap yeah. said that to you and me Shannon just realizing this is not my night yeah he realizes that this might have been a mistake but you know what what's funny is as soon as the bell rang Sean George ran across the ring and threw a right hand to the body and it was a great right hand um, I think you know Brooks told him get him out of here and that's really the only thing that's been missing for Sean George as a light heavyweight again against Richard Hall. It just showed so much skill and poise, but you want to see a guy, as Antonio Tarver said, rightly so, you want to see a guy step up and be exciting, be powerful, take somebody out. And that's when you get a fight against Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones, Bernard Hopkins, Joe Calzaghe. Yeah, you got to make a statement. You got to make a statement for sure, especially in this division. This is a great division. Reminds me of those days of Marvin Johnson, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, uh, Dwight Muhammad Kwali. It's a tough division right now. So you haven't given Chris Bird a round yet, even the last round, huh, Shannon? No, I can't. You know, I mean, I really like to, but I got to be honest and fair. And I tell you, yep. man, Sean George is such a, uh, you know, professional right now. He's doing everything. He's, he's stepping to him. He's, uh, when it's time to, you know, sit back, he's being relaxed. I mean, I'm very impressed with this guy. Yeah, he's, he's been impressed. He looks great. Round six, by the way, the first time that Bird has out-connected Sean George. Doesn't mean necessarily that he would win the round, not disputing your scorecard, but it was the highest connect rate of the fight for Chris Bird with 16 landed shots and only 13 for George. So things are getting a little better for Chris Bird, but by no means is he winning this fight. Not even close, especially with the knockdown early on in round one. You know, Chris, uh, Brian, early in Chris' career, his whole thing, his whole, his main thing was that he fr he frustrated guys. He got guys up off their game plan. He made a miss. He pity patted them. But now that's not happening. You know, he's not as elusive, elusive as he used to be. And he was winning rounds against Ike Abayabuchi before he got caught. And Abayabuchi, you know, had he not had his, all of his problems and gone to jail, you know, might have taken over the heavyweight division. But Chris Bird was able to fight against the top killers in the division. And even a few years ago, outboxed Jamil Klein, outboxed David Tua. Exactly. Guys who could really whack. But now these are different sort of punches coming from Sean George. I think the, uh, the years have took their toll. And, uh, you know, Chris is now at the point where he's 37 years old. He had a huge amateur career. I think Chris started boxing like 10 years old or something yep. like that. So, I mean, he's had, he's had a lot of fights, man. I mean, two, 300 amateur fights, you know, a lot of pro fights, two heavyweight championships. You know, he did his thing. A lot of miles on the odometer. And then and you're not even counting all the sparring, you know, through the years with his brothers and the youngest of eight children. Bird battles back. He knows he's not at his best, but he's trying. We're back for round eight. Sean George has been crisp, sharp, and powerful in this fight. You see the counter right hands knocking down Chris Bird in round one, and it's continued. Can't miss that shot through this fight, Shannon. Nah, he's uh, he's right on point with that right hand, but I'm surprised that, you know, Chris is still hanging in there, and uh, he's trying to make it, you know, he's really trying to get that win right now. Bill Chris, a lot of experience, a lot of pride. 
Again, a guy who has gone to Europe to fight the Klitschkos <laughs> and three times between the two brothers. So a, a, very, a tough man, what strong will, and even now at 37, where he's not feeling as strong, now eating some hard, crisp right hands from George, but he's still trying. Right, he is. He, he really is. But, um, you know, I think the corner needs to look at this and say, you know what, what's going on, and, and make a decision. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe he's taking too many headshots, because uh, like, we, like you stated earlier, Brian, uh, Sean is a very, very accurate puncher. <laughs> Let's bring in Joe Bird, Chris Bird's father and trainer. Joe, wh why is this happening? What's your assessment? Well, he a uh, kid out outsmarting him. That's what it is. He still got the style like he fight the heavyweight. He fight the proper man, getting it in and getting away from him. And he tried to dab, especially leading it just like that shot, lead with that left hand and come back with hooks. But the kid did in the shoulder, see, and he just set him up in front of that right hand. What, what can change, Joe? How can you change that? He's going to have to get set and try to catch this kid with a good enough hand. He got a good, he got a good enough hand if he throw it. But, you see, he went there and, and underestimated him. You see, you can't underestimate a smaller man because they quit. Joe, this is your son, so you've seen him you, you're, his whole life. What about the weight loss? Has that affected him? Well, I don't think the weight's affected him. He just ain't getting old. You know, see, he could do that with the big guys and get away with it in the late round. But the small man, you can't do it. He got to stay on top of it. He didn't even punch the room. He just smothered that right hand. Come back with his left hook. But he ain't throw the left hook in the whole fight. Joe, we appreciate your time. Thanks. Yeah. We'll let you get, we'll let you get back to work. Difficult for Joe Bird watching his son again. Such a tremendous fighter through his career and just eating all these right hands. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the weight, the age, or the wrong guy, a combination of all three, Shannon. Yeah, I think it is a combination of all three, to be honest with you guys. Uh, definitely the wrong guy. This is no pushover guy. This is a guy who wants to make the statement. Like I told you earlier, he said he told me yesterday he had tough sparring. He wants he wants to take advantage of this, this situation. And I think he is. He has been building slowly to it. Again, the good amateur pedigree being in the, the fighting family. You know, his uncle is trainer Lennox Blackmore, so it's not just marrying into the Duva family. Again, putting it all together now, full-time fighter. His wife is pregnant, so he knows the family is coming. Says he, his dream is to buy a house. Yeah. This man fighting for his living. Yeah, baby, me, me, she's That's right. <laughs> He's doing a tremendous